if there is one constant in the universe, it is this. Using Windows kind of sucks. It is painful. It is annoying. It is bloated. And just on principle, we're supposed to hate everything about it. Yet there is one man on this green earth of ours that appears to have dedicated a significant portion of his life to making Windows tolerable. He has created an art form out of making all of the annoying rough edges of Windows a little bit less rough. And that, of course, is Chris Titus. We're going to talk to him today on the Lund Duke Journal of Technology podcast for Monday, September, whatever the heck day it is in 2023. Chris, say hello to the world. How y'all doing? They're doing fine, by the way. They're having a great day right now. They're having an absolutely great day. It has been a long time since we've done a show together, my dude. It is great to see you. Holy yeah, a couple of years, man. So it, I'm really looking forward to this. It has. We did a meetup together in Dallas back in back like two years ago. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. I, was, I think it was the beginning of 2021 and oh, then geez, a little yeah. bit in 2020. We had the weekly meetup there when we were live streaming for a good that bit there. That was great. Those were and good that was times. awesome. I Those had a good blast times. doing that with uh, Matt Harley. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, random Who is, fourth guest. And Matt Hartley is working over at Framework nowadays. He's helping them make sure that Linux works great on their Framework laptops and everything. Oh, yeah. He's, do, he's doing awesome. the Lord's work. You know what I'm saying? Um, all right. All right. But let's, let's put all the Linuxiness aside. Let's, mm -hmm, let's, mm -hmm. let's focus on the fact, and I think that this is both wonderful and mock worthy that you mm -hmm. have spent such a huge amount of time creating what is it the the ultimate windows script and the windows deep blow what what all tools do you currently have really, to make it's, windows it's just, better to use yeah it's mainly just my one catch-all open source powershell tool on github so everything's there and the whole idea was I really dedicated and kind of cut my teeth in social media from the Linux part and learned GitHub and a lot of the open source power of that. But traditionally, my background's in Windows, Windows Server specifically. I have like an ungodly amount of the alphabet behind <laughs> my name from Windows certs. Yes. And, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and I was like, delightful. you know what? I already know all this. Let me just uh, let me fix Windows because I'm tired of these questions. So that's what kind of brought it all together. I took that Linux base from what I got from social media and GitHub, and I was like, let's let's take all my admin scripts from 20 years of working in Windows. Let's let's make Windows suck less. And that was kind of the whole premise. And I was like, at the very least, it'd make for a good YouTube video. Yeah, sure. And here we are, three years later, and. I think I have like 10,000 something daily users where it just hits. And That's just crazy. Things. I, I, I vaguely track it. So, so what all, like, what's the high level? Like what are, what are like the top, like two or three things that it does to make windows better? Uh, yeah. Yeah. The top three things. One, if you've ever used something called night night, it's basically that <laughs> on steroids where it uses Winget and chocolatey. It, it, again, a lot of that Linux CLI uh, package manager, but I did a little front end for it. So then you can just tick all the pro programs you want, hit install, go. And then the second thing is tweaks, removing a lot of the telemetry. No, wait, wait, hold on, hold on a second, hold on a second. Come back, come back to the chocolatey side of things. Explain chocolatey yeah. to people because I, I don't think most people realize that chocolatey is even a thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, there's chocolatey and Winget. Windows 11 has Winget built in, and then there's chocolatey that's been around wait, for like Windows a, 11 a has Winget built in? Yeah, Windows 11 has it built in, okay, and that's that. a CLI right, package right. manager. I need to, I need to, I need to make sure I, I make something clear to both you and to the audience here. So I, yeah, I have never used Windows 11. <laughs> I, 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 I use <laughs> I, I, Windows I 10. <laughs> I use Win, I use Windows 10 a little bit, but I hated it. Windows yeah, 8, yeah. I hated that one. Um, Windows Vista, I, hate, I hated that one. So I was on the release teams at Microsoft for both Windows ME. I'm sorry, and Windows 2000, you're welcome. And I, so I worked <laughs> on Windows. I, I worked on those releases. Like, I, I I lived and breathed and slept and went potty to Windows for years. And uh, I, I knew Windows inside and out, every last little bit of it, right? Mm -hmm. Until I left Microsoft. After the Windows XP period, I just kind of just couldn't, 
handle it anymore. Like I, every release of oh. Windows, it seemed like it got farther and farther from that holy grail of Windows, which is Windows 2000, which is the best Windows yeah. that was ever made. And I agree completely you, with that. You're welcome, <laughs> and thank you. Um, and as it got to like Windows 10, I just I got so mad at it. I I couldn't. I, I wasn't uh-huh. having it between the activation and the severe bloat and and friggin' Cortana and and all these just annoying features. I just couldn't handle it anymore. So I never even tried Windows 11. So I am well, surprised that they have Win get built in now. That that, that yeah, surprises yeah. So the me. good news is they got rid of Cortana in Windows 11 latest release. Or if they haven't, they will on the Insider Edition. If if you look at it, oh, the bad news is they've added a whole bunch of other crap. They've baked in Yay! Microsoft Edge. <laughs> and oh man, we could go on a whole rant about the browser wars and them having to split up with uh, them bundling Internet Exploder in there back in the late 90s, early 2000s. You remember that? Well, yeah, now well. Edge is really difficult to remove. And, uh, you know, I, I partnered with another guy from GitHub that made a removal tool, and it is probably a thousand lines of code to remove Edge from windows 11 i mean it it takes a thousand lines of code to remove a friggin web browser yeah yeah yeah. damn it microsoft this is the kind of garbage (laughs) i'm talking about this is why this is the way i I can't get into using windows every time i get into using it something like this comes up and i'm like you're friggin kidding me yeah yeah okay all right it's bad all right I need. and there's other aspects that uh it's it's definitely overstepping and with them partnering with like chat gpt and open ai uh, they're yeah. looking at integrating some of that into Windows 12. So, I mean, it's only going to get worse from here, but it's way worse than what you remember. Okay. And I just wanted to kind of throw a couple tidbits in there for you. Oh, my God. This is hurting me a little bit. All right. All right, let's, <laughs> all right let's go back to chocolatey, though. So explain yeah, yeah. what chocolatey is for the uninitiated. Yeah. So, so if you've used Linux before, you're on a Debian-based system, you use an app to install stuff. If you're on an Arch-based system using Pac-Man and so forth and so on. These are CLI yeah. package managers. Well, that's what Chocolatey is for Windows. And that's what Winget is for Windows. Those are both package managers where you can just go Winget, install that's OBS, beautiful. and See, it'll that's, install it. That's beautiful. So so you kind of build all that into your script so you can, so people can kind of like one-click the heck out of that. Yep. Well, that's kind of nice. Exactly. That's kind of nice. Now, all right. All right. So, all right. So, so you've got all that built in. What What else does it do? What else does it do? So then on another tabs, tweaks is where I strip down a lot of the telemetry, a lot of the background processes. By default, you're you, if you're coming from XP, it ran about 15 to 20 processes as stock. Uh, Windows 10 and 11 typically are anywhere between 120 and 150 processes now. So the tweak section Good removes a lot God. of the telemetry and bloat to where when you hit that, I just have a recommended option. I, I say just if you're unfamiliar, just click recommended and hit run tweaks. You'll reboot and you'll be down to like 80 or 90. It, it chops That's it better. almost in half. That's better. Yeah. Better. But yes, I mean, yeah, it, I mean, it's, it's still a lot of processes. So friggin modern windows. All right. But but I mean, that's yeah. that's a hell of a lot better. Um, how, how about how about the activation stuff? Can you work around that at all? Well, I mean, activation is kind of tricky because of how everything is structured now with it. Uh, in Tell me Windows, about it. yeah, I mean, th- these days you could use shady third party websites and spend uh, a couple bucks and just grab no, a key. Yeah. And, you know, there's that to activate. There's, eh, you know, here's, here's if the you thing. go with a traditional hack program, you could do like a KMS type situation. There's ways around it. But uh, I but never recommend no, them. A lot of no times, good on the upright legal way to get around it. No, no, no. That yeah, it's, it's best just to, you know, uh, get a key for whatever whatever version you're using, or just you use know, Linux. You, you know. know, I don't. <laughs> yes, uh, see, see, I don't, I don't mind having to have a product key. You know, a serial yeah. number, all that. I, I, did, I never really minded having to input that back in the old days. You know, I had a key for my various Windows releases, and I just always had them handy and used them. I just hate the online activation aspect of it. Yeah. I hate, I hate having to rely on a server. Like it's just every time I have an OS that has to connect to a server to like authenticate itself before it allows me so graciously to use my own computer, it just makes. 
me want to start spitting weird venom out of my mouth. Like I, I turn into the, I turn into the dinosaurs that just want like Nedry to get covered in black goo from Jurassic Park. Like I just get angry. <laughs> well, I'll say this much: it's got a lot better in that regard like you probably come from the days of you know you call an 800 number and you type in all those different fields and yeah. then there's the product keys and all that authentic and that's kind of a thing of yesteryear there's still some remnants of it with like slg ui dot vbs script that is still in the background <laughs> that is still you might remember that from i the remember back that yep yeah yeah it's still there I like there's that. all these things that you remember that are still there but there's this huge fresh coat of paint on top of it. And what they've done now is they look at your hardware and they register and figure out like, you know, your serial number on your motherboard or whatever it might be. And then they register that with the official Microsoft server. So as soon as you go to install Windows on that machine, as long as the versioning matches up, it just auto activates. Okay. So there's really no not... activate Windows now for most users <sighs> anymore. It's just... If it had it on there once, you go to reinstall it, it just activates. That, that's better than... Uh, I don't it's like it. It's scary as hell, but I, it's there. <laughs> I really don't like it at all. Before before we go any further, I've got a whole bunch of questions for you. Um, but we, we, yeah, yeah. we do this thing on the London Journal where all the podcasts are private, are exclusive just for subscribers, unless mm -hmm. some of the subscribers say this podcast sounds so interesting that they want to pitch in a few extra bucks and and release it to the world. And uh, uh, an anonymous person said, I want this Chris Titus po podcast to be released to the world. So they pitched in a few extra bucks. They wish to remain anonymous, but they wanted me to read the following quote. <clears throat> and this is their okay. right. I am not allowed to modify these quotes. Oh, good Lord. Betty Botter bought some butter, but she said the butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, it will make my batter bitter. But a bit of better butter will make my batter better. So she bought a bit of butter better than her bitter butter, and she put it in her batter, and the batter was not bitter. So twas better, but it, Betty Botter bought a better but of butter ah god damn it. this is really diff that was a really that's the best take i've been able to do <laughs> well done well uh, yeah, done well yeah done. he sent that over to me and i'm like you really want me to read that he said yeah read it fast lunduke and i'm like yeah good luck on that um all right <laughs> so so th so thank you anonymous you have made the world a better place now what i want to ask you is this titus you released this ultimate windows script it makes windows less bloated, rubs off some of those rough edges, makes it a little bit of a nicer experience to use, gets rid of the, some of the telemetry, basically makes windows what windows should be when it ships. How does it feel right. to be doing Microsoft's work for them, but not getting paid by Microsoft for it? Well, I mean, here's the funny thing. Like I started this script as just a way to make one video, Yeah, you know? And, uh, you know, that's how I, I was on the content treadmill of YouTube. And you're, you're a podcaster. You, you understand that. You do a subscription-based model. Then there's the, the ad-based model that I'm on, you know, more views, all that. <laughs> Sucker. Uh, you know, yeah, it, I think, honestly, I kind of hate both models, if I'm being honest. It's just I found a new model that nobody's ever even heard of. And I, I, I just speak to this because if you've listened to your last episode with Chris Fisher, which I love that episode, by the way. You laid on me. Um, you, you guys reunite and, and hearing you guys talk back and forth about this. But I think you can actually go with an open source development of a tool. And if it gets enough popularity and enough people like it, you get donations. You could even do like a closed source offline version, which I'm working on. And then say, hey, if you donate, you get this portion of it. But if you want the full thing, that's OK. It's all open source on GitHub. You can just grab it from there, too. So that's kind of where it is. And this tool has gotten so popular that I now make enough in donations to where it's actually eclipsed my YouTube revenue. Seriously? So, well, that's wonderful. I love that. Yeah. That's fantastic. So I've, I've actually fallen into programming, of all things. You're which a is coder, kind of dude. <laughs> One of us. One of us. I love it, man. That's awesome. What is it? How does that feel, though? I mean, but not only are you a coder. You're a Windows coder. You're in the, yeah. you are, you are as Windows of a developer as you can get. When you're, the name of your thing is literally like the ultimate Windows script. I mean, come on. 
I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. You might as well be MS Titus at this point. So, yeah, yeah so you know, how I, does that feel? There's a part of me that just Deep says, down. I, I, I really want it to be like Vim using like, you know, Rust, <laughs> and, and you know, to be cool. <laughs> But well, no, you, know, you, you, sometimes... you have to get an anime character and, and dress up yeah. like a furry and all that sort of thing. That, that's, yeah. that's a, that's that, a that lot would be to do. like my dream there. But, uh, you know, usually reality is a little bit sadder. But <laughs> at the same time, I'm really happy with it, with it where I'm at. And I do get much more enjoyment as I do feel like I remove a lot of pain from the world that Microsoft inflicts on it. You do. I mean, that's. So, I mean, every now and then I stumble across someone who is posting your Ultimate Windows script and was like, dude, why didn't I have this before? Why didn't I know about this? I didn't know you did this. I was trying to do this on my own and it was awful and I was crying tears of blood. And then I found this Chris Titus script. And every time I see that, I smile a little bit and I'm like, yeah, my boy is making the world a little bit better. Do you think, so with when Windows 12 comes out, do you do you think with every release that Microsoft's going to keep making the job harder for you, which in turn will both make it make you work more, but ensure yeah. that you will continue to have work to do <laughs> and have a source of revenue? Like, exactly. what do you, what do you think it's is going like, to happen? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what's going to happen. Windows 12 is going to come out. They're going to integrate a bunch of this open AI crap in there, and it's just going to blow up Windows even worse, and there's going to be even more demand. And that's the thing that just, you know, if Microsoft were like, hey, let's be a good guy and just strip down everything and make everybody's user experience great, that'd be fine. But then, you know, there's also this when you look at, you know, the actual penetration of Windows, it's not what it was. It's not a 98% market share anymore. It's, you know, 70% now, which is kind of wild. I think it actually dipped in the 60s it has for the first time. It, it was bound to happen, though. I mean, it was, yeah, you yeah. know, when back, back when, uh, Back when I was at Microsoft, you know, back during the Windows 2000 launch time frame, at that point already, Microsoft was dominant. It was 90 something percent market share. We owned everything. But we had meetings internally where we're like, look, we screw up a couple times in a row and we lose that. We knew that all it took was us to be dumb at the same time as someone else being smart. And all of a sudden, they're going to grab 25% of the market share away from us, and we're going to have to do mass layoffs. We knew that that was coming, and we, we viewed ME as that. Like, there was after the ME shipped, I mean, half of the ME team had PTSD from how difficult it was just to test that release. And yeah. there, there was a general feeling at that time, like, oh, shoot. If we don't get everyone over to the NT code base and over to NT5 or Windows 2000, would, because most most of Windows 2000's life, we called it NT5 internally. But we, if we don't get everyone over there, we're going to mm -hmm. lose them. Like, and so, so Windows XP was literally like people view it as like, oh, that's just the really good version of Windows that looks kind of like a Fisher Price toy, but we all love it anyway. But <laughs> realistically, that was a bit of a Hail Mary pass because if we didn't manage to get everyone over there, the future of the 9X code base was just a nightmare. And we were going to have more ME type releases and we knew that someone's going to come along. Maybe it was Apple, maybe it was Linux because Steve Ballmer was pissed about Linux back in those days. Ah, uh, cancer. And, cancer. Well, shoot. <laughs> I, I mean, I, you probably heard the story about having my face covered and spit from oh, yeah. Steve Ballmer yelling about Linux. I mean, he he was pissed about it. And so he was certain that it was coming for Microsoft, that Linux was yep. coming for Microsoft and ME was going to provide the chink in the armor. Right. And so that now I look out at like Windows 11 and Windows 12 and they are so bloated like so obscenely mm -hmm. ridiculously like how big is windows 11 now what it's so many gigs in size right like how big is it it's 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 not too bad really it lies it's huge size. compared to vista 7 i mean really vista is when it got really bloated it and then it big. just never returned back to normal size and 7 to an extent was okay when on launch and then it got bloated and uh you know it they go back and forth. It's not really the size portion here. It's it's the feature creep that that's <laughs> happened, and also there's other concerns too it's so because I have big, a lot though. of. It can't be yeah. that big. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean it's 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 not as bad as you think on install. I want to say about five gigs or something like that. Five to ten gigs. Titus, um, Titus, stop, 
Stop right now, <laughs> my friend. Because you've got a, some serious, like, Stockholm Syndrome thing going on right here. Yeah, you know what? He doesn't torture me too bad. You know, yeah, he hobbled my feet. They throw the potato oh, chips under the door every he, once in a while. Right, and they, they, yeah, sure, they rip off some of my fingernails with pliers, but it's not the worst in the world. I have some fingernails left. No! Five gigs is unacceptable for an operating system base install. It is unacceptable. That's, that, that is not okay. So That's a mean there's thing also that another they did, concern, and they too. did it just to hurt you, and you know it's true. Yeah, there's another big concern that a lot of people miss, and, and uh, you know, I have a, a buddy up in Microsoft that works on the compile team um, that, that works on, you know, if you, you have any binary that Microsoft released, that compile team, you know, back 10 years ago was 150 people. How many people do you think work on that team now? I'm not sure. I'm not sure how many. About 70. Really? So they're not dedicating many resources anymore to a lot of the foundation of Windows. <laughs> and there's going to be massive problems coming up for Windows because it's run by marketing people. And I, I see yeah, a re yes. visit kind of like Steve Jobs said about Xerox back in the day when these marketing people take over these large companies. They just kind of run them into the ground. And in the tech space, That's you just can't do that. You need to be nimble. You need to be able to be flexible. And Microsoft's really not that anymore. No, they're not. You know what they need to do? They need to just hire you to keep keep Windows quality. Because, like, I, I, <laughs> like, seriously, like, I'm looking at the features on your website. I hope you're taking away a revenue source because you got to remember <laughs> that a lot of the revenue that they get is not actually from box sales anymore. Like, a, traditionally, it was. A lot of it is from harvesting users data i think a lot of that when they're typing in that Sucks search so they're much. getting that redirect through edge they're doing that search from the, the start menu and that's all being tracked and, and sent back to them and, and your that script can be bundled up and sold some of that at least yeah yeah how how much how much do you think isn't removed like like do you have any indication of like how much tracking that you just haven't been able to figure out ways to reasonably and safely turn off yet yeah, yeah. There, there's a good portion of it. There's a security side of things that you just can't disable that telemetry and uh, it's not safe to. Uh, you could cause system instability. Yeah. And, and yeah, I have no way to disable that. That's just built into Windows. Yeah, and, that, sucks. that sucks so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I just, <coughs> you know, it's, it's, it's funny. I have I have these weird feelings inside of my soul because I'm I'm like a, a Linuxy guy, you know? But mm -hmm. I, I also worked on Windows and so like I have hate built into my heart, my cold icy heart from current versions of Windows, both because I want them to be like the old versions of Windows and because I, I want to laugh at them because they're not Linux or they're not Mac OS or something else, right? <laughs> and like yeah. it's just uh, it, it's very difficult for me to overcome it. So let me let me ask you this. Me, as a as a guy that hasn't even tried Windows 12, that has inbuilt disdain for so much of the current version of Windows, it's putting political and corporate things aside, just the functionality of it just drives me nuts. Right. Do you think that if you took Windows 12... Apply just a just every feature that the win, ultimate Windows script from Titus the Windows guy could possibly do to it, right? To just fix that up as best as Titus can. Do you think that it's a quality enough release of Windows, a quality enough version that you could convince someone like me that, hey, this isn't so bad? Putting the open source stuff aside, putting the, the oh my gosh, it's Microsoft, they're the devil, blah, blah, blah aside, but just right. as an OS, like as someone who loved Windows 2000, do you think it's possible to get to the point where, where I'd be interested in it? If I just, no? no? There's no Absolutely way? Absolutely not. Like, there's no way. Like, you don't use Windows because you want to. That doesn't exist. <laughs> that, that user doesn't exist. Anybody that uses Windows, we use it because we want to play games. You know, if we want to play a AAA title and it has anti-cheat or something, I mean, it's getting better on Linux, but it's still not on parity. No, it's not. And it's not. Yeah, you want to use an Adobe product. You want to use uh, Office. You want to use some of the integration. If you're in business, you're dealing with Active Directory and domain joins and all these other things that just exist in the world because of the monopoly that Microsoft is. 
And you don't use Windows because it looks nice or it feels nice. You use it because, well, you have to. And for someone that has already gotten another workflow and can do all their daily stuff in another operating system, whether it's Mac or, or Linux, you just don't get those users back when your eyes get open to, hey, it could be this good over here. I don't really need any of that stuff over in sure. Windows. There's, there's no appeal for a person like that. They're just, it just doesn't exist. So how about, how about for you personally? Cause I mean, you, you have to live in this stuff to really yeah. know how well it's working. Do you, do you find that once you've applied the, the Chris Titus TM super ultimate install script 5,000 TM to a windows 12 install that it's an enjoyable experience? Do you find that windows is, is enjoyable to use for you once you get it to that point? to a point i would say yeah it gets in in i kind of go in i'm kind of bipolar in this regard because <laughs> that's okay I, i've used I it for it. 20 something years <laughs> and i i just love certain aspects because i know every little nook and cranny there is to know in windows yeah and i can do everything i possibly could want to do and i'll i'll get it fixed exactly the way i want it and then a week will go by and I'll like be living in windows for, you know, probably either coding or updating my toolbox and then something will happen. And it just pisses me off so bad that I'm like, I just can't, I just can't anymore. I'm, I'm rebooting the window and I always have Linux just on another hard drive right there. And I'll just boot back in. I'm like, I'll see you in a month windows do better. Now, now <laughs> you weren't know? you, weren't you, gosh, I'm trying to remember, didn't you have kind of like your own little like desktop spin thing going on for a little while on the Linux side? No, not, not really. I've never, I've never really believed in custom ISOs. I like teaching people how to strip down like install.wim, the main install okay, yeah. version of Windows, uh, using either NT Lite or you could use, you know, uh, the distribution tools from Microsoft. You could use uh, a lot of different tools out there, but uh, stripping that down and getting a debloated version of Windows is really nice and understanding how to get rid of that. I kind of always like teaching people that. Uh, so, they, that, you know, if you do need to use Windows, you can and you can use it in a way that is less frustrating, but it's still <laughs> frustrating at the end of the day, regardless. So so when you get frustrated with Windows, when 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 you have a bipolar mood swing of technology and you just can't handle any more MS love. Uh -huh. What what do you go to? What's what's your Linux distro Mac free BSD thing? Like what are you jumping over to to make you it, happy to cleanse your soul? It's always Linux, and these days I'm like a purist where I really like as say minimal Arch, as it gets. You? Whatever you're gonna say, Arch. It, it, I don't really care if it's Arch or Debian. Okay. It can be either one. It just has to be a server install. I don't like any desktop oh, environment. No. I don't like any you of that extra crap only. on there. Just just give me the server and then I'll toss DWM and Xorg on top of it and I'm good. I love Interesting. You know, DWM. It's it's great. I mean, that's a good way to go. I mean, I I, I can't fault you for any of that. It, it's suckless. You know, it does one thing and suckless, it does it well. Suckless, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. suckless yeah. applications are just <sighs> Yeah. Unix philosophy, do one thing, do it well, be yeah. solid, be modular as all get out. I, I love it. I, so I it's a great palette that. cleanser because, I mean, I've even got to the point where I'm like, hey, I can just put Duvian on there or something like that <laughs> where it uses OpenRC instead of System D, And then yeah. I'll probe my suckless utilities on there and I'll be like, ah, nothing. It only does exactly what I tell it to do. <laughs> how about how about on your recording setup nowadays? Like your your machines that do all the recording and all the video editing. Are you doing that all under Windows, Mac, Linux? Where, where are you? Where do you mostly do it now? It's almost all Windows now. Like I at one time I had. Uh, Didn't you have a Mac setup web... going for a while? No, no, the Mac was for editing. Once upon a time, when I was using Final Cut. Oh yeah, yeah. But these days I don't. I kicked all. I'd use DaVinci Resolve all the way. I switched this past year. And uh, for Windows, it's all just a stripped down version, no updates. And all it does is I just get in, power it up, hit record, and I'm good. And it'll probably get an update once a quarter. And that's about it. I just treat that's it like a. Go. Yeah, it's an appliance. And it works great. You know, yeah, it's so I've got I've got for me, I've got one little Linux laptop that does 
everything for me on all my recording. Mine's not quite as intense and fancy as yours. I, I do mostly audio with very little video, and then when I'm not there, I'm off mostly writing articles and whatnot. So I don't I don't have to do as much. I've got I've got a <laughs> I've got an old version of KDN Live as an app image on my Linux desktop. It's several releases back, but it works, so I don't touch it. You know, I don't I just yep. turn every every update off and and live the good life. And what, I think a lot of people miss that too. Like when you need something to work, it's not about chasing the new shiny thing. It's about oh, finding the is. thing that does work and sticking with it. And that's where most people go wrong with computing. If if you really want a great system, find something that works for you and then just don't change it. Yeah. Tur turn updates off. Don't install anything. <laughs> right. Ever. All right. All right. Since you've been building the ultimate Windows script that makes current Windows tolerable, usable, and more enjoyable. If you couldn't do that, but you had right. to pick one version of Windows, like one release of Windows, that think that's that's one that I could live in full time. What what release would you go with? A modern day would probably be Windows twenty twenty one LTSC. Because it doesn't have the Microsoft Store, relatively deep loaded. Ah, you go and, the server uh, side then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could do, you could do that. Or uh, if I if I didn't have that option, I'd probably go with Windows Server. And uh, you know, I, I know all the ins and outs of Windows Server, and it, typically its update cycle would be a lot better than traditional Windows. Now wait a minute, wait a minute. Windows twenty twenty one isn't that server? No, no, no. The LTSC is a enterprise workstation kind of setup. Oh. Oh, I'm unaware of this. Give, give, give me the skinny. Give me the skinny. Yeah, modern, a long term Windows. stable branch. I, I see. It's actually modern LTSB, I, I think it's over. actually what it was first called. And then it was transitioned to LTSC, which is long term servicing channel, I believe. Oh, okay. And it's an enterprise type uh, distribution uh, where it's Windows, but it doesn't have a lot of the, the built in shenanigans that you get with traditional, you know, the guinea pig version of Windows, which everyone else has. Well, that does sound better. That yeah, that sounds a lot. It better. is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what if you could, if you couldn't do that though? Um, if you couldn't do, it, well, let's say you can do that, but any version of Windows from version Windows 1.0 back in the 80s through Windows 12 nowadays. What's your what's your Windows happy spot? Like if you're going to install Windows because you like it, what's that version? Windows 2000. That, that was my favorite and you're not version. You're just saying just... that because you're winning brownie points. It's good. No, right? no, no, no. I, I actually made a tier list on my channel, Windows tier list, and that's what I put in the S tier, and that you was a couple a months list. ago. <laughs> yeah, I made a tier list for Windows, and 2000 was the only S tier. Beautiful. It was good, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, man, I miss those days. I miss those days so much. Those, those, that was a good release. It was. It was. I mean, it was kind of funny because the the worst release of Windows was also right along with it, which was ME. It ME was, was the bad. worst version of Windows that just kept getting worse with every update. So I was, I was working on Windows Media Player during the oh. ME launch, and both Windows Media Player during that time was ultra buggy, and the ME releases up until the week before launch were just just mega crashing sometimes blue screen style sometimes just in other wild ways mm -hmm. every single build i was there in my darn office testing broken windows media player on broken me builds oh. all day all night every day every night until that, that darn like thing went gold master <laughs> the the death march of windows me makes makes microsoft people twitch to this day it was yeah awful it was awful we literally the version that shipped we kind of were exhausted and there was there was so many groups involved and every group had to sign off on things and we were sitting around a conference room and we were just exhausted and it was like well this build is working yeah it's not great do we have showstopper bugs yeah we do can we reclassify those as not showstopper bugs and technically make them go away? All right. It's a severity two now. And then we just reassign those bugs and they don't exist oh. anymore. Ship it. Make it go away. We'll make a service pack release later on. It's, I, I want to go home and die. It was oh, bad. Oh, man. It was a bad Yeah, I actually bought Emmy on release and it was so bad that I was like, screw this. And I went and pirated 2000. When and it was like, oh, this is 
way better. Even with the pirated version with like oh, viruses yeah. and crap on it, it just worked <laughs> way better. <laughs> it was. We, the crazy thing about Windows 2000, it was high quality and ready to ship way before it became named Windows 2000. Like it was still yeah. NT5. I was testing it on old deck alpha machines and all sorts of stuff that never even shipped. And uh, I remember thinking, man, this is the best version of Windows ever, and we don't ship for a year. I'm like, this is awesome. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, those were good times. Those yep. were good times. They if, were. If they only, were, but... if only we could, we could get driver hardware support for Windows 2000 that could make it reasonable to use nowadays and and backport some software if only yeah i mean i think the closest you'll get is like remix os is kind of like a spiritual successor of it to some some extent yeah yeah and and you know we've got the open source react and everything else but oh yeah react react, react yeah. yeah i mean but it's it's not quite the same you know it's no. It's not it. It's not. It's not it at all. Yeah. And, and I mean, from a business perspective, if I could go back to any version, XP was like a money printer at that time. <laughs> I think I was billing out one to two thousand dollars a day from infected computers. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. So, <laughs> I love it. so anybody that had a computer repair shop in the 2000s knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, they were they were having a good time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but hey, look at the bright side. At least your job isn't going around fixing xp virus infected machines anymore i mean that's oh yeah that does begin to cause a person's brain to melt after a while oh no doubt no doubt oh my god so many great stories from it but yes, yes. i'm glad i don't have to do that anymore so so now nowadays so if you've got if you've got this script that that takes windows and makes it a little more tolerable to use uh tell mm -hmm. people the url for that real quick tell people the url um, probably the or, easiest way to get to it, just cttstore.com. Okay. So go there, check it out. Um, but if you've got that going on and now you've gotten to the point where as a programmer for this windows script, it's, it's kind of eclipsing your YouTube revenue, which honestly, I mean, right. your YouTube channel is jamming, right? I mean, you've got, oh, yeah. you've got a ton of subscribers over there. You're, you're bringing in the numbers. You've got that big, beautiful mug of yours in 4k glory. It's amazing. Um, what, what does the future look like for you? Is are you going to be doing more of that? Are you going to pivot away over to that? What are you going to do? Um, I'm, I'm kind of so indecisive right now because I've kind of split my time four different ways because I still have my day job, which as a IT and uh, IT yeah. manager, I got that, but I've hired someone to do pretty much my job for me and he's great. And, uh, that's working out well. So I imagine that'll get sunset probably later this year. And then I also do Twitch streaming for live streams. Uh, usually I like to pound around in there and just either do programming streams or yeah. just, you know, theming out a Linux thing. So I'll get some revenue there, usually a couple hundred dollars a, a month. And then I have two YouTube channels, you know, the main channel, Chris Titus tech with about a half a million subs. And then half Titus a tech million subs, man. I remember when yeah. you got started. <laughs> hey, can blows I just, my mind, can man. I just tell you something? <laughs> I am wicked proud of you. You have done a fantastic job, and you consistently do great work. And, man, I, I love seeing those numbers grow. May, warms yeah, my you. icy thank little you. heart, dude. Thank you. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I, I don't know, man. I love all, all this. All this seems like a dream to me because, honestly, I still like my day job. I still like doing the live stream. <laughs> I still like making videos. So maybe and you I love doing all of it, right? I, I love programming. So, like... To me, it's just great. So a lot of people are like, oh, my God, you must be working like 16-hour days. And, dude, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm as lazy as I've ever been in my life, and I always feel like I need to be doing more. <laughs> and, you know, I think that's a great feeling because I think I, I got a lot more in the tank that I could, I could push forward. Um, and once, you know, I probably consolidate some of that, yeah. um, I probably will. And I, I, really, I really need to focus. My main primary, like, number one focus is – just making that tool as good as it could be and then um doing doing the youtube which the youtube's now you know i, I don't even have to do on the main channel you know usually two to four videos a month where yeah. you know three years ago i was doing a video every single day you know yeah, that you whole content treadmill was kind yeah. of brutal 
I, t- I tell you, man, uh, that, that is one of the things that I've loved about getting away from the YouTube and the open public podcasting treadmill. I yeah. don't have subscribe or I don't have uh, marketing people with sponsorships or ads or Google AdSense or AdWords. I just I, I make shows only when I think they're interesting. Right. Right. Like, like I'm like, I, I get to talk to Titus. Yeah, I'm going to talk to Titus. Like later this week, we got uh, Andreas Kling from Serenity coming on. And like, wow. you know, like we get to t- I get to talk to people who I want to talk to anyway. This is yeah. like, this is like my version of going and sitting at Red Robin and getting a burger with some nerdy guy that I like hanging out with. Except I get to do it whenever I want to. And it's my job. Like it's and that. Oh, that's yeah. that's the magic man that's, that's the, magic the magic right there like I, I when i got into youtube i was like okay i can't do this all the time every single day i don't want to be that i i'd learn yeah. i would grow to hate it yeah and that's when i started Me kind too. of pivoting to these other things to kind of get that variety but i still can do all the things i love you know what that's pretty smart dude that's pretty smart because i i love that you've got the youtubing and the coding going on that way hopefully yeah. you don't get mega burned out on either of them <laughs> Hopefully. Fingers <laughs> crossed. Well, I mean, there's that damn visual studio. Oh, I hate it with a dire hate passion. It so but, much. It's oh, been bad God. for a long time. It's 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 oh. it's just so bloated. Like you go to launch it and then all of a sudden like your XMLs get associated with it, and then you oh, you go to open an XML file and it's just like, oh, loading Visual Studio, and you're like, oh Lord, what have I, I love done? that that's become a common joke nowadays. Is I accidentally <laughs> clicked on XML and now Visual Studio loads and now I cry. Like I love that because I've but, but I mean, shoot, I mean back when I worked at Microsoft, it already associated too many files with it, and I'd already get one time I had all the text files on my system associated with Visual Studio. And I don't even know how that happened. But so every time I went to open a text file, I'd accidentally bump open Visual Studio. Like, no! Oh, I hated it. I hate that system. I never want to go back yeah. there at that time. It's a dark time. Yeah, uh, I've, I've been trying to minimize that as much as I can. I do do Visual Studio code when I can, which is a lot better. Or what do you, what do you, just what do you straight code Vim. the whole of the script in? I mean, what what do you do all the coding in? What, what language? Uh, probably eighty percent is done in VS Code. Uh, no, no, good no, no, the language, 15%. the language, the language, the language. Not the, oh, the language. Not the, um, not the editor. You well, can do that in Notepad for all I care. What's the language behind it? <laughs> yeah, uh, probably most of it is all open source PowerShell. So it's a little oh, nice. bit tricky because I have to convert like XAML for the GUI, which yeah. is all plain text. So building all that in plain text has been difficult because I wanted everything to be open. And so anybody can see every single line of code. Nothing's obfuscated. And you could just go through and see, That's hey, really this is cool, how I build though. the GUI. This is how I, I do this tweak. Everything's right there in plain text. And uh, I love that with no compiles. Everything, it actually gets, when you run the script, it's literally just downloading a PowerShell script and running that. I love and that. that's, that's, that's the gist of it. I absolutely love that. That's that's a great way to approach it, man. Yeah. Could, could you imagine if more people making Windows software took that approach? How open and transparent so much of it would be. Oh, be heavenly. Well, the beauty of it is, I can I can design a Windows program better than a major company because those major companies the the release cycles are so insane and trying to get feedback yeah. is almost impossible. And when you're doing everything through GitHub, I do a bad release. I get a hundred issues opened and it's all like, Hey, this is, this is what's wrong here. This is what's wrong here. This is my system. And I get instant feedback. So the beauty of open source is really that, that you can make the best piece of software out there where a closed source counterpart with a hundred people has a hell of a time doing it because they just can't uh, get that same feedback loop from their users. True that true that even, when you're making a Windows utility script. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. I mean, I, I guess, I guess, shoot. I mean, almost all open source software is hosted on GitHub, which is Microsoft anyway. Yeah. Oh, heavens to Betsy. Um, hey, hey, Titus, do you want to tell anything to the world before we head off into the sunset, my friend? You know, I, I just always say one thing. Don't be afraid to fail. 
You know, there's one thing I, why I do live streams is most people, if you ever pop in there, you'll see me failing at something. And it's more about just getting out there, trying something new and failing at it miserably and then trying it again until here's, you get a better result. Here's what I love about you. I, most people, I'm like, hey, do you have anything you want to tell anyone? They're like, yes, go to this URL, www. <laughs> you, you're like, excuse me while I get philosophical for a moment. You don't be afraid <laughs> to fail. Hang in there, kitty. Like, it's, like beautiful. All right, everybody, uh, go go check it out. Um, I've decided that uh, I'm not going to make fun of Titus too much for his immense contributions to the Windows ecosystem. Uh, I'm going to have to deal with that emotionally somehow, but uh, I'm going to work on that. And uh, with that, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerd and nerdettes, I do declare, end podcast. <laughs>